owning a restaurant was these people's dream. We've always said, we'll start a restaurant. Some invested everything. We put 50,000 into the business. Busting their guts to make it work. The priority is to pay my staff. I do have sleep this night. But it's a ruthless business. Four minute steaks for table five. It's an element of survival. We've just been living off credit cards. I can't pay my bills. I'm so completely consumed. I've seen him in tears. I've seen him not be able to eat. It's business or marriage. And with so many big brands crowding the high street, the pressure is greater than ever. I don't know how we're going to cope. I'm Alex Polizzi. Hello, hello. Having set up and managed successful restaurants around the world... Let's get on with it, then. Yeah. I want to try and help struggling owners sort out theirs. You want to entice people in. It's too big because that slows down service, doesn't it? It does. It'd be practical to have it here and it will separate off the room a bit. You obviously struggle with customers at lunchtime, can't yeah. you? We're going to have to unpick this. It won't be easy. No, mate, no. I think it's the nerves that are getting the better of me. But if I can bring some inspiration... Why don't you do an offer and say, subscribe to the supper club? And they, some hard work and determination... Chicken tikka, one body. Excited to get it to work for us. There you go. It feels a lot more curated as a menu. It's awesome. amazing. Can I turn things around and leave them a lasting legacy? Look at this. Are you happy? Absolutely. This is what a restaurant should be like. I love it. We're seeing what we could do and be more positive about it. Check. The restaurant feels it's got a brighter future. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs>Bedford is home to over 10,000 Italians, so you would think that there was a lovely captive audience there. However, there are also 40 Italian restaurants in Bedford, so the competition is pretty stiff. And Rio Bello isn't managing to stand out from the crowd. We're going for the more traditional vibe. What we're trying to do here is be authentic, because I wanted it a bit more upper class in terms of the way it's cooked, the way it's presented. I don't know whether our name helps sometimes or there's something against us. My wisdom said, well, people know the name, let's keep it the same. But well, maybe in hindsight, in we hindsight, probably should have changed it yeah. and relaunched, really. Yeah. Despite working six days a week, Giovanni has yet to make a penny of profit, and his dream has become a nightmare of dwindling trade and escalating debt. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was bleak. Uh, we only had four customers in all night. So we ended up cleaning, kitchen, just waiting for customers to come in. We're just not making money. I mean, we, we need to make money to live. Just when you think, ah, oh, we're making a little bit of headway, bang, you get knocked back down again. All our savings and even the little bit put aside has gone. You know, all our money, it you know. Is, yeah. What worries me more is how you are now, because you're normally such a positive person, and you're not anymore. You, you, he doesn't even want to come into work anymore. You also carry the guilt that you've put us in this yeah, position. I do. It has been getting harder for me not to resent the fact that you've put us in this position. Yeah. I know that. We cannot go on the way we're going on. With a restaurant and a relationship at risk, this is going to be a big challenge. Hi. Hello, ciao, Alex. Piacere mio. Grazie. grazie. Nice. Sono felice di essere qui. Anch'io, grazie. Molto contento. So, 
What was the dream, I suppose? What made you take this place on? The dream was always to have an Italian restaurant. Uh, <laughs> for my sins, you know, something that I was passionate about. I love cooking, love food. What does Amanda think of this whole project? She's backed me 100%. Uh, she's helped me as much as she can. But I think it's got to a stage where she's a bit tired. Had enough. Had enough. Uh, and because we're working for nothing. And she's probably just nervous about the, what the future holds. OK, let me have a look around. May I? Yes, sir. Thank you. How many covers are there in the restaurant? We can see 70 comfortably. And uh, when's the last time you did 70? Um, I haven't. Not for a long time. Do you get any lunchtime business? Sometimes, not very often. So in the last two weeks, how many covers have you done over lunch? Last two weeks? Um, just ballpark. I'm not expecting you to seven. get... Seven. Gosh. If that. So nothing. Really nothing. Two were yesterday, so... All right, before we go any further, can I have a coffee? I would <laughs> love to make you a coffee. I think I, think I need something to stiffen the proper, spine. Proper Italian coffee. Yes, please. <laughs> all right. Good. How are you? You yeah. all right? This is Alex. Alex, this is Amanda, so my nice wife. Nice to, nice meet, to you. meet you. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Thank you so much for coming in to talk to me. That's OK. I think we should all go and sit down. I know this was Giovanni's dream, but we're all going to have to work together if we want to turn things around. He has said to me that you have been 100% supportive. Do you still feel like that? I do, but I'm tired and I'm stressed. Is it the fact of the restaurant and the different hours and the lifestyle and thing, or is it just the money thing? No, it's everything. It's not just the money. It's everything. I look at Gio and he's stressed all the time to the extent that he's sh he will shake with being stressed all the time. And it worries me because we can't go on the way we're going because he's changed. Our marriage has changed, our life has changed, everything's changed, and not for the be better. And it's sad. Very sad. OK, so I understand that the changes need to be made. If they're not made, what, what next? From my point of view, it's, it's either the restaurant or our marriage. I know that's, that's really God, harsh. That's tough. It's hard. It's really hard. It's been the hardest time that we've been together these last two years because I know um, you've hidden a few bits from me, i.e. credit card debt. I didn't know that about, about that till about three weeks ago, probably. And I know he didn't tell me because he was worried and I know he feels the guilt because it was his dream. It's, he put us into it. Saved by the bell. So are you cross with him? I go from being cross to being upset for him because I know I know he's stressed and I know I don't want to be cross with him and I don't want to resent him. I think you've got to start making some tough decisions and you've got to start making them now. Clawing back a bit of time and a bit of family life is something you can do straight away. Because obviously, you know, this relationship needs a bit of time and attention. Yeah. Okay. after opening Rio Bello in Bedford, Giovanni and Amanda Orlandi are struggling to juggle their business and their relationship. It's got to a stage now, it's business or marriage. This is the way it's going, because I, I, we cannot go on the way we're going on. The restaurant has never made a profit, and a glance at their menu tells me their work-life balance isn't the only thing that needs to be better defined. What would you say you specialise in? Because I've got no idea from looking at this. Yeah. Um... Specialise in pizzas, pastas, steaks, <laughs> fish. And there's some dishes in there that one night we'll be selling loads of, and next night, nothing. And I'll give you a prime example on the back. Oh, my did, God, did, sugar. <laughs> didn't realise there was a bag. Do it's you... a fairly extensive menu. I, it's too big. It's too big because also that slows down the service, doesn't it? It does. Of it. Chef's trying to do too many things all at once. Mm. It won't just be heaping on the pressure when the kitchen's busy. It means more costly ingredients to bin when it isn't. No wonder he's losing money. I think I'll do a margarita. A margarita? Next. Yeah, that's the real test of a pizza. OK, isn't it? we'll get one margarita for you. A lot of comments on your TripAdvisor over here is about the huge portion sizes. Yeah. It's the Italian mentality of putting lots of I know, but then you don't sell any desserts, and you don't sell an affogato, and then you don't sell the contorni, and then yeah. you know. Don't you? 
well has a knock-on effect. Knock effect, yeah. Food waste costs UK restaurants £682 million a year, nearly a pound for every meal served. Those generous portions could be a sign of a bigger problem. Are you good on the figures? I'd like to think I'm pretty good. <laughs> but are you? Are you on top of costings and expenditure and all of that? Malarkey? As much as possible. And that's one of the main things that restaurants fall down on. More worrying, though, if Giovanni can't identify what his restaurant specialises in, how are diners supposed to know why they should come here? I have to admit, that is a good pizza. It's good. With over 10,000 people in Bedford of Italian descent, there's a large potential market for Rio Bello right on the doorstep. People tend to move where their communities are, so you tend to find concentrations of a particular nationality. It means that there's usually a very vibrant food scene from that community, but it also means there's a lot of competition. For the past 20 years, cafe owner Libby has been serving many of the Italian community at his cafe in St Paul's Square. Hi. Hi. I'm Alex. Hi. Liberado, Libby. Libby. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Very okay. nice to meet you. Italian, Hi. right? Of course, yes, yes. So what restaurant do you go to? I don't know if you've been to Sant'Agnello, which is a pizzeria, which um, is one of the original sort of places that's opened up. Still got the, the oven with the, the wood inside. It's checkered tablecloths. Everybody sits in benches. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's one of them places. You know, yeah. you just have pizza there. It's a lovely place. It's a nicer place. <laughs> That's the trick to everything in life. It has to be bloody good, because you've all got so much choice these days. So if it's not good, people vote with their feet and they go somewhere else. Just, I'll take for both of you. Yeah, uh, 3 50 Special price for you. Bye. See you next time. We need to get Rio Bello on the radar of the Italian community, but there's a lot to tackle, starting with refining the large, unfocused oh, menu. Thank you very much. In a crowded marketplace, you have to stand for something. Is it a pasta and a pizza place? Is it somewhere that you go to get a really good risotto and really good meat? I want to feel sure that you know what it is that you're offering. And also, why would someone come to you rather than one of the other 39 restaurants yeah. in this place? You need to look at your opening hours, because I think you're killing yourself for nothing. I mean, how many people came in today? Six for lunch? Look at the figures and you'll quickly realise what days it's worth staying open and what days it isn't. But you have to see that as you reclaiming your life and actually having time then to sit down with a marker and write yourself some lists. It makes sense, yeah, because I found myself working too much on the business, not in the business, and uh, well, the other way around. But it's taken up too much of my time and I haven't got the time to focus on the menu, the costings. You know, it's all basic stuff, but you can't just hope you're going to open a restaurant and it's going to work. You've got to get the offering right and you've got to get the costs right. It's not enough to have a dream. It has to be built on really firm foundations. The only way of competing is A, give soul, and B, give a point of difference, and C, make it clear that this is an act of love. Ultimately. What makes us different from all the other restaurants, that's going to be the challenge, big time. Defining Rio Bello's unique selling point among the sea of competition won't be easy. So to help, I've called in renowned restaurateur Oliver Payton. He's my brother-in-law and I trust him implicitly. As you see, we have 40 restaurants here in Bedford, Italian restaurants, all serving more or less the same stuff. I don't think it's clear how he's standing out in any way, shape or form. I mean, you literally are faced with a menu and you just think, well, what is it that's going to be half decent here? The yeah. thing about a menu like this is when you look at it, you just don't trust it, do you, straight no. away? It's too much happening to trust yeah. it. People want something much more focused. I completely agree. I think we'll get some Italians to come and eat, see yeah. what they think of the quality of the food. Get some feedback, yeah? Yep. While Oliver goes in search of some gastronomic guinea pigs. Hello, do you mind me interrupting? No, no. Can I just ask you, uh, do you like Italian food? Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi, are you all right? I'm looking for some people to come and try Italian food. You're all Italians, right? Yeah, we're all uh, Italian. 
I head to Rio Bello to deliver our plan. Hello, hello. Hello, Alex. Hi. How are you? When I was here last time, it was quite quiet at lunchtime. It was. And I'm really keen to see how it works. I've organised for a whole load of people to come and try out the food. OK. Um, I'd like to see what kind of things they choose. Right. Uh, I have reached out to the Italian community. Interesting. Our challenge aims to give us valuable feedback on the size and quality of Rio Bello's menu from some potential customers. It will also be a chance for us to scrutinise the restaurant when it's busy. Darling, Oliver knows so much about food. Yeah. And so we've partnered up on this. OK. Because I think, you know, we've got quite a big challenge. Yes. We don't have very long to do it. Yes. And um, with his guidance, I'm sure we'll get there much quicker. Thank you. We'll okay. Thank you, Oliver, as well. With the restaurant filling up, the first challenge is taking the orders. OK, so I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of your host and then I'll come back and talk to you in a minute. Um, I'll pop back in a minute for your drinks. Thank you. Have a look at that, OK? Easier said than done. Try, well, something testing, cos there's also, of course, all the stuff on this side. Oh, wow. That's only volume one. With mains costing between 8 and £22, there's a baffling array of 80 dishes. So big menus. Very, very big. Not too much of a choice. Signora? Uh, scalopino. Scalopino. I'll have the salicia. Salsiccia. Okay. And then I'll have the uh, linguine. Offering more choice might seem like a way to attract more customers, but it puts the chefs under pressure and it can end up leaving everyone confused. What did you think of the menu, Oliver? Way too much to digest. You know, it's just not clear. It's, it lacks any personality. I think it's very interesting to listen to everyone here, you know. I think there's obviously a few places that are excelling, you know, where the owner is really large and in charge, is part of the community. You know, no one knows who the owners are here. The decision not to change the restaurant's name or relaunch when they took over has left it invisible to the people who should be its core trade. Right now, though, we have a more pressing problem. I'm feeling quite stressed out at the moment because I think the food's coming out quite slowly, considering, I mean, there, there is only 14 people here. Offering so many different menu options can make it impossible for the chefs in the kitchen to deliver a consistently high standard of food and on time. What's your order? It's the uh, gabardino fatigue. Would you like to try that? Just piles of food. It's just not thought out in any way, you know. I want Amanda and Giovanni to sit down and eat the food. Sit down and you order off the menu and that's I'd like you to try the food again. That's it. That's not the way it's done. Like I don't give too many it, it, it should have it should have a sauce on the side, it should have tomatoes, it should have cucumber, it should be a bit more decorative as well. Under pressure from the huge menu, the whole Rio Bello dining experience is suffering. I think they've got 19, 20 different pastas. It's ridiculous. You don't need that many. Too much of a choice. And it's probably hard for the kitchen to keep up with that choice. I've got 3,000 clients. I could say, yeah, go to Rio Bellos. They're brilliant. But if I do that, they're going to come back to me and say next day, hey, what happened to that Italian restaurant that was supposed to be good? There has to be a change made quite quickly here. Because honestly, the food going out was not brilliant. I winced. Let's put it that way. The last thing we want to do is crush Giovanni's dream, but we do have to encourage him to have a major rethink. In two years, you've done quite a lot of things wrong. You admit that yourself, so yes. I'm not telling you anything you don't no. know. No. Got to take back you to back basics. to basics, and we've got to get the foundations in yeah. that you can then build on. Yeah? I mean, that menu, you, you just got to throw it out. Let's use fresher ingredients in a simpler manner and let us structure a menu so the chef can deliver it for a service. You need to do less and you need to do it better. This is not just about the food. None of the locals know you exist. And the only chance of you surviving is you becoming one of those local hub Italian restaurants. That's going to take a monumental effort from all of us, Amanda included. I think the hard thing is that do you have it in you to do it? 
I mean, if actually the idea just makes you want to leave him and run away <laughs> and get, get him to rent a bed sit somewhere and be gone with you, because there's no point pretending that it's going to be easy, because it's not, because you're here and you're nowhere. Yeah. This is not a something where we wave a magic wand and sprinkle the fairy dust. And so you two obviously need to discuss things. And um, we'll be waiting to help. We've certainly given them a lot to take in. Positive or negative, how calmly they took it? I think they've been battered so much as people by the whole experience. <laughs> And I, I think that concerns me. Do they have enough left in the engine, in the tank, to, to keep going? I don't know, Donny. Let's see what they come back to us with. Yes. You know, they need to be pretty bloody gung-ho, because otherwise they're in, you know, they're in trouble that we can't save them from. In Bedford, I'm working with restaurateur Oliver Payton to help owners Giovanni and Amanda improve the fortunes of Rio Bello. We invested everything, all our savings, yeah. and a lot more. And I must admit, I sometimes do have a breakdown and get upset. With the huge menu most kitchens would struggle to deliver quickly, and one that isn't enticing the locals away from the other Italian restaurants in town, we need a major rethink. Having had to give them some tough love last time, I want to check they're OK and up for the challenge ahead. Ray Bella Russell, can I help you, so? Hi, darling, it's Alex. I was wondering how you were after everything Oliver and I had to say to you. I thought a lot of it was fairly spot on. Have you and Amanda talked about your commitment? Yes, I mean, we had a long conversation at the end of the day. So, yeah, we're 100 and okay, um, that, no, that's definitely, good. definitely. Okay, grazie. Ciao, ciao, grazie. Ciao, bella, ciao, ciao. Grazie, ciao. We've identified three key areas for improvement. Connect with the local Italian community, offer something different from the competition, and reduce the menu size. We have to make your menu something that is really high quality, that's deliverable at a cost you can afford to make a profit, you know, and we have to find your little niche. Oliver's brought Giovanni and Amanda to London's highly saturated food market to show them it's possible to thrive with a limited menu if it's done really well. This is a slice of pizza in the west end of London at four pounds, or a whole pizza, 20 inches, 20 pounds. That's all they do, nothing else. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Yeah. I'd like to meet my friends Giovanni and... Pleased to meet you, Mark. Thank you, yeah. Man? Hi, man. Hi, man. How are you doing? Tell them about pizza. We kept it really simple. Just pizza, wine and beer. We do ten variations a day. We change them seasonally. We just cooked in a wood-fired only oven. For us, it's about the quality of what we do. The quality of what we put on the pizzas. It's like we ship our mozzarella in twice a week from Naples. Our uh, salami comes from an independent producer right in the centre of Italy. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, So that takes about 70 seconds to cook. And then you've got the dressing, the finishing of the pizza, and then out it comes. So you get your slice, pull it apart like that, pick it up, fold it in the middle, all contained there. And that's it. And that's it. Fewer choices mean the kitchen can deliver high-quality food every time, and fewer ingredients lowers costs and waste, so it's also easier to make money. Our menu's too large. I would like to see a proposed menu on A4 with four salads, four pizzas, four pastas, because otherwise I don't know how long the restaurant can stay open as it is. You have to do something new and different and better to succeed. Next stop, Notting Hill, and a place voted London's local restaurant of the year Service. for its unique take on regionality and the provenance of its ingredients. You know, punterella, taste that. Actually, peeling punterella is pretty hard. <laughs> you know, it's precious. Yeah. 
I like the artichokes. It reminds me of Rome very much so. My dad and my uncle, where they live there, he used to grow them in the garden, so he used to pick them and cook them and, you know, bring back all those flavours and aromas back of Rome. So, yeah. You have to get those on the menu. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, since the last meeting we had, I mean, yeah. thinking a lot about the menu design and what we're going to do. And going back to maybe a lot more Roman and Lazio kind of dishes. And I've been looking and researching a lot of the other restaurants, and none of them do that. Get all that food from round the hills of Rome and get them on that plate there. Yeah. Giovanni's clearly been doing his homework. Grazie. And he's not the only one feeling inspired. It's making me think we need to go back and we need to do this, 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 and yeah. this. That's what we know. Yeah, definitely. Now. It's just definitely like, you know, we've got to do this, definitely. we've got to do that, we've got to change this, we've got to change that. But it isn't going to be easy. If they can get a half decent menu down to four, four, and four, I'd be really surprised and very happy. But I just got to give them something that's a target to start off with. It's been very um, eye opening, I think, especially seeing how people are cooking the ingredients and the simplicity of it and how quick they've done things. And I think we need to kind of take that forward now. Feeling inspired, Giovanni and Amanda waste no time working on Oliver's strict 444 target menu. And Giovanni thinks old family recipes could be the key to success. So there's no other restaurant in Bedford that uses this, do you know? Not as far as I know. So let's boil some water. Um, and get some sauce on the go. Do you use some onions chops or are you all right? Uh, no, we're okay on that. When we ever we used to go to Rome, my uncle was, was used to cook this and my auntie as well. Because it is easy and it's tasty. They use the guanciola, which is the cheek. But again, you don't have to use that, you can use pancetta. Obviously, we've got to work out the costings. It's going to be an important factor for us as well. And um, portion control is another big factor. That's quite a lot as well, I think. We'll try that. We'll try an 80 and see what that looks like. How hot's that going to be? Hopefully not too hot. Mm. Is that right? Mm. That's nice. Is that right? Mm. It's tasty. Adding new dishes is easy, but hitting Oliver's target of shrinking the menu by 75% is a big ask. It still looks quite a lot on there. It does seem like a lot, and I think, you know, it is a work in progress, because a lot of people love the favourites. OK, they're not traditional Italian dishes, but that's what they seem to go for. And everything also Challenging. that we need to do has got to be fresh ingredients as yeah. well, because that's what that's Oliver what was suggesting that we need to do. That. So we can't have anything that's got anything frozen on it. No, there's nothing going to be there that's frozen. Go on then, signora. Andiamo. Let's go and try. Mmm. Tasty. Simple but really tasty. Do you think the portion is right? Do you think that's okay? I think so for a main course, yes. Rio Bellos never made a profit. Rigorously costing out every serving will help them ensure they're actually making money. So you're looking at about 85, 87p. Per dish? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That making the profit that we'll you need to yeah. make on it. Yeah, if you're making the, the normal standard GP margin, it should be fine. Okay. There's lots of restaurants that sell dirt cheap pasta at four ninety nine or five ninety nine. Fair enough, that's up to them. But do well, we maybe... really want to go that low? No, I don't. Why should we? If you're selling a quality ingredient at a reasonable price, people are gonna pay for it. It's a promising start. Hello! 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 Hi. Ciao. But I'm worried opening for lunch six days a week isn't just coming at a cost to their family life, it's actually costing them money too. The very first day I came in, mm. I said to you, why are you open all the time? I have been saying to him, you need to really close a couple of yeah. afternoons because you're not busy at all and you're no. opening up and paying wages and it's... And it would be nice for him to actually be at home for a little bit more. But I think, you know, there is really an undeniable economic reason why, and I'm going to go through it with you. At the moment, profit from the busier evening trade is simply swallowed up, paying to heat, light and staff an empty restaurant during the day. So, whether you open or not, it costs you £87 a day. The moment that you've come in here and you open for lunch and you put the lights on, utilities, bills, um, electrics, etc, etc, wages, that is another £289 a day which takes you to 376. Did you realise you had to take that much money every day? 
I think we both realised we need to take a lot more than we're doing now. Yeah. You know, you're not so busy that you can justify being here every day. So I think we need to kind of address that balance and also we need to make a difference to the bottom line. Closing on the quietest days will make a big difference to their overheads and hopefully their relationship too. And I also have a plan to make a difference to the decor, if Amanda agrees. I want to show you what I'm thinking about doing, um, to give you a chance before I do it to say, oh my gosh, no, you must be crazy. Basically, it's to make the place look a bit warmer, a bit more properly authentic Italian. Yep. Um, it'll look like that. Oh, right, OK. Yes, that's lovely. Then, we'd like to change the chairs. I think these are very old-fashioned, these chairs. I've always hated the chairs. So I'm always. getting you a job lot of chairs. Thank you. So along this wall, we're mm -hmm. going to do a shelf with okay. bottles all along it. OK. Mirrors and some pictures underneath. So it will Lovely. really fill up that wall and look nice. OK, that's great. We want to add colour and we want to add life and we want to add interest. Make it a bit more layered. Yeah. Yep. Sounds lovely. Good. Sounds really good. OK, well, that's fantastic. It really feels like we're making progress, but it'll count for nothing if no one knows about the new and improved Rio Bello. I brought you here to the Club Italia because I always feel like us getting out and seeing people and talking to people is a good thing. And that's a lot of what being in business is about. You must have really been beaten down by life because meeting you this time, you feel a lot lighter and a lot more kind of able to deal with whatever's chucked at you. Yeah. You seem much more cheerful, darling. Do I? Yeah. But less, less pissed off. Yeah. I mean, I think that, <laughs> if I have to really yeah. put it, was, yeah. it's just, you know, less cross. Encouraging them to spend time together working on the business seems to be paying off. Before you were trying to take it all over yourself, but now I'm seeing what we could do and be more positive about it, because we're talking about things more now. Yeah. What you're doing now is being proactive. You're actually finding ways to sort it out. And I think that's a clever thing to do. Because the only alternative is to say, lock the door, throw yeah. the keys over your shoulder and walk that away into it. the sunset. Yeah. You know. And we that's don't want to do that. Hearing Amanda so committed to the future of the restaurant is such a positive step. But there's another issue we still need to address. And there's a lot to do. And I really think we, we need to relaunch Rio Bello. You said yourself that you came in and you took it over and you just did it under the radar. We never put under new management. No. The more we do to make it obvious that there's been a massive change, the better it is. A few days later, they both hit the streets to put the final stage of our plan into action. Hello. As of next week, Thursday, we'll be doing a new menu. It's actually a lot smaller, but it will be fresh ingredients. Hopefully you'll love it. Working together to reinvigorate Rio Bello isn't just bringing them closer to the local community either. Just to invite you again to come round uh, and enjoy the hospitality like yeah, you did last time. Okay, yeah. Amanda's been a tremendous support. She's been very uh, enthusiastic and upbeat and very, very committed now. People associate the restaurant with me. It's not, it's us. I come to invite you to a reopening or a relaunching of our new menu. And for her to be a bit more proactive and a bit more there is encouraging for her and it gives her a bit more an upbeat uh, feeling as well, which is great. The next day, work begins on the revamp of Rio Bello. I'm really excited about how everything's changing because obviously there was a lot that we would love to have done, but we couldn't afford to do it any more than we've done now. Unfortunately, our plan to make over and reduce their huge menu and only offer dishes inspired by Giovanni's Roman roots is not running so smoothly. He knows he's got to let go of this big menu, but I think he's finding it really hard, really, really hard. Yes, I have a few reservations. A lot of the dishes that are very, very popular are no longer on the menu. So, reaction to change, we shall see. Two months ago, I joined forces with restaurateur and food critic Oliver Payton to help Rio Bello an ailing Italian that was driving a wedge between owners Giovanni and Amanda. The aim is to, for us to try and get 
a bit of our life back together again because it was all about the restaurant. We've asked them to really analyse whether they could afford to open for lunch six days a week and they've bitten the bullet and reduced their opening hours. It's like a new start for us now. We've also asked them to slim their menu right down to entice the locals in and to give the kitchen a chance of delivering good food. But Giovanni needs some reassurance. Hello. Hi, darling. How are you? Yeah, very good. I'm very impressed with how well you've tackled the challenge. I want us to celebrate everything you've achieved so far. And hopefully to reassure you that you're now on the right path. <laughs> <laughs> you're nervous about it, but what is going to make that successful is that you're going to do those dishes perfectly every uh, single time they leave that kitchen. It is a bit scary at the end of the day, but we just need to push on now and get it finalised and ready for the relaunch. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you. Thanks a lot, Alice. To make yeah, such a huge change is terrifying, but... The only way really to stand out in such a crowded market as Bedford is, is to really have the courage of your convictions and just to do a few things and do them really, really, really well. Streamlining the menu was never going to be easy, but streamlining the time they spend at the restaurant is making it easier to put things in perspective. Yeah, it's always that dilemma of thinking, you know, when you've been analysing all the old menus and the new menu, yeah, but you've been analysing it too much. You've been going over Possibly. it too much. You need Possibly. to just do it now. Yeah. Then we can change it every month, yeah. every week if we have to. Yeah. Here's to um, hopefully um, a change of um, quite a few things, not just the menu. Which Ooh. makes a change, doesn't it? It does. When was the last time we did some of I'm your Who husband, are you? by the way. <laughs> are you? <laughs> You're the one I see at home sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. With the day of the big relaunch upon us, Oliver and I have travelled back to Bedford. So, remember what it was like when we first got here? Their marriage on the rocks? Yep. No money in the bank? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it couldn't really have been much worse, could it? Well, I remember walking through the door and it looked like two people stuck in the headlights of a car, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. But I really feel they have put their back into this. Yeah, I agree. Giovanni and Amanda's openness to the changes we've suggested has been amazing, but there's one major change we haven't seen yet. Wow. Using a simple but stylish mix of bold colours and design classics has given Rio Bello the warm look of an authentic trattoria. I'm really, really pleased. Money well spent. It really is well spent, and it's transformed it. Hey, hello, hello. 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 Good to see you. What do you think? Fantastic. 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 <laughs> I want to know how many people are coming. We've We're got packed. Oh my gosh. Packed. We're fully booked. We're fully booked in. Yeah. Two sectors here. So, it's had yeah. to actually turn people away for tonight. Yeah. Gosh, that is a high class That's problem. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. But there is still the matter of the menu. We advised it had to shrink, but has it? I am dying to see what you've done to the menu. Okay. Follow me. We'll have a coffee. Come on, let's go. Oh, my God, this is what it was. Oh, nice. Let us just remind ourselves. <laughs> Let's have a look at the new thing. How do you get from that to that? You're oh, not a amazing. chef. How do you do that? We, what, um, in all honesty. In all honesty, listening to people yeah. is the biggest thing. I assume you've done the GPs on these. We have. And that they are coming in at the right spot, they the are. sweet spot. Focusing on fewer, more unusual specialities gives diners a clear reason to come and should help the kitchen deliver consistently good food. I'm really excited. Me too. I'm going to keep a tally of what everyone's ordering. OK. Yeah? Tonight's full house is certainly going to put that to the test. How are you? All right? Take your seat. Come and stay. Hello, 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 Problem. The shorter menu means diners are no longer being left baffled about what to choose, and the kitchen can now properly handle orders when they do. That looks nice, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it's fresh cold. With chickpeas, it's yeah. very nice. Better still, it means quality and consistency won't be sacrificed for speed. Yummy! Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Mm. Yummy! Mm. It's yummy. She says it's yummy, so... 
a restaurant packed with locals enjoying authentic dishes they can't get anywhere else. It doesn't get any better than this. To me, it's all about the menu. It's very challenging to change over that quickly. And I actually think they're all doing a good job. He knows where he wants to go. I mean, that's really important. Before, this was a rudderless ship. He had no idea where he wanted to go with the food. Taking control over the menu also means Giovanni has more control over his profit margins. The figures aren't the only thing that's working better, though. Gia and Amanda are just, they're on fire. I know, they're really working and they're really loving it. Are you having this as well as your gin and tonic? Oh, <laughs> she loves She's so charming and she's having such fun. Yes. But tonight isn't just about having a good time. I've been keeping a close eye on the takings too. It's going really well. It's so really far, nice. after only 11 covers, 433 quid. It's looking good. It's looking good. We're getting there. You're looking good. <laughs> Listen to that noise. This is like, to a restaurateur, this is like the best music you will ever hear. <laughs> At the start of this process, we were concerned Giovanni and Amanda might not have the energy to turn Rio Bello around. Right, OK, let's go. We needn't have worried. It was fabulous. It was yes, yeah. very. Superb food. We, we, yeah, we really atmosphere. Best pizza I've had in a long time. I tell people about it. Yeah, very happy. How do you think it's gone? Atmosphere-wise, and people enjoying themselves, I think it's gone really well. When we arrived here, you hated this place. I do feel so differently about it, and I really want it to work. I really do want it to work. And I feel like it's ours. And actually, you two are so capable. And you're a fab team, aren't they? Great team. Because you created the magic. When it works, it's like directing a symphony orchestra. Yeah. And everyone playing in tune. What I think is quite impressive is what you turned over tonight is what you turned over the whole of last week. Yeah, you can imagine. Over a grand and a half. You do that three, four nights a week, Donnie. You've got yeah. a really viable business. Absolutely. Salute. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. To the future. Two years ago, Giovanni convinced Amanda to gamble everything they had on this place. Tonight, it's starting to feel like the odds might finally be stacked in their favour. I'm leaving here on a real high. They seem much more happy together. They seem much happier with the restaurant. Fantastic evening, absolutely fantastic. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Always very, very proud of Amanda, watching a lovely dance tonight. That's what I do for you. Thank you. I love you. Good. It's been hard, but I'm very proud of you as well. I promise you, now they've got the taste for it, now they see how great it can be, they're going to want this. It's all over there. We're really enjoying it, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, This is just the start. Success here. Me too. Genuine. I I'm think it's really... the best thing we've done. Oh, I know, I'm so glad, darling. Oh, thank goodness.